Hi everybody, my name is Danica Joan and welcome to Custody Matters Live. Normally, we, my host, host is Wendy Perry and she is joining me, but she is, she's been under the weather. I don't know if you have checked her posts, but she is definitely dealing with some, some uh, complications with her vision. And I tried really hard to, to get her to come on and I said, I said we could even like not put her face up there, but like her picture and stuff like that. So, but um, she didn't respond. And I, I, in a way it was sort of like, it was sort of a tongue, tongue in cheek thing to kind of lighten the situation, but it was, but, um, but I'm sure she, uh, but she'll be back in a couple of weeks. That's the point is she'll be back in a couple of weeks, rearing to go in a hundred percent. And um, so send her love, send her prayers, send her light. All right, so today our guest is Beverly Thatcher. Hi, how are you? Hi there. I wanted to, I'm going to give you a little background into how I know Beverly Thatcher. I actually met her in, I met her on the phone before I met her in person. I met her on a global leaders call. So Beverly and I are in a program around, uh, it's called Team Management and Leadership Program. And Part of that is this whole body of global leaders that are up to huge things across the planet in various things that are important to them. Maybe it has to do with the environment or economics or, or whatever, but this particular call, global call that we were on, Beverly was featured and it was around her project that has to do with families. So that's the connection that resonated with me. So that being said, Beverly, please, please share with us about your project. So awesome. So before I get started, I'll give you a little background, how I got into where I am, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work on Wall Street and maybe to the rest of the world, it looked like I had this, uh, the perfect life. But the truth of the matter was I was really in hell, living in complete chaos and it just seemed no matter what, I couldn't hide from people problems. They were everywhere, right? And I, one day I just, I really made up my mind, like I'm gonna go and sort out my life, figure out how to make this work with integrity. And when I figure out how to end my chaos, I'm gonna get out in the world and help as many other people that wanna get out of chaos. So that is my mission statement. So as I started doing this team management leadership program, what I really discovered is the fastest way for people to get out of the chaos is working as a team. And that's really the power of, that's why I took on wanting to work with families. So when, when they, it's, it's creating that level of understanding so that they, they really get their part, like in every dynamic, I find it's dance and people are just playing their parts. So creating that awareness for them um, is what begins to create, to turn the situation around, right? So I started working with my first family and I'm piloting my program, which I'm really excited about. And it's, it's, it's being effective. Like you're getting it to, to, to hear a 16 year old who I can relate to is in that defiant place right? With your heels dug in, kind of fighting with the world, really getting the impact of, of what he's, where he's at and playing out like what it's going to look like 30 years down the road and just watching that shift, you know, the tears rolling down the eye and realizing he's blocking off all the love. It's uh, heart wrenching, you know, it's very moving to watch them coming together now. Wow. I get what you're saying. I, from the very beginning of, you know, getting out of your chaos, getting out of your chaos, a lot of it, it just means jumping into something, bring and, and bringing team to it. Um, and I think all, a lot of our viewers can definitely relate to, to uh, the children who are, who are torn in, in the midst of, of divorce or custody or, or whatever that are tugging back, you know, that it, we, we as parents, we feel their pain which right. makes it even more painful for us. So, so tell me, what does it look like? What are you, uh, okay, so you have now a family that you're working with. 
Tell right. us, I mean, what does it look like um, with your project? So, so the first week, so I laid out a five week program, right? And the very the first session, my goal is to really bring to life the understanding. You know, I identify it. I call it two minds. One mind is, uh, I call it monkey mind, right? There's a lot of names you can refer to it, right? Booga booga, Lamar calls it the morass. And then the other mind is really our sane mind or love, you know, that's however you want to look at it. But you're either in one or the other. And depending on how you feel, your state of being, it's a real clear indicator of where you are. Right. So when they start to get that and that it's either like you're in your reactive mind or operating in a connected place, they they start to understand like they, the all the moral judgments and all that other stuff like of being in the reactive mind, they begins to vanish. They just start to see it as their role instead of like keeping score and like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that to me. It was so horrible right? It, it starts to take away the significance when you, when you break it down like that. And they, so then I break out like a very detailed chart, right? Similar to landmark, but a little bit more detailed, right? With uh, more items on the left-hand side, like guilt and shame and what, what, uh, where, so people can identify exactly where they're coming from, what they're doing and, and ideas from the right-hand side all the different areas and things to put in, which, which create love, right. To come to, to facilitate listening or to appreciate or acknowledge, or to just to stay, take a step back, to go meditate, to get calm. And they have that on their refrigerator. So they all know when there's an upset going on, they're all running to it and pointing at it and pulling it apart and looking at it. So, so that's working. And the second session, um, we focused on, on the aspects of love, right? Because there's two ways of transforming a relationship, right? I think all, all of the reactions, all of the pain, it's coming from guardedness, right? Essentially, when we're guarded, we're not really liking ourselves, so, so in the second session, the focus is for people to, is for the family to really get to, in, to consciously incorporate love, to start to create a foundation where people can start to trust and relax and let that armor come down and start to talk, right? So, so inside of that, they start to develop some habits, um, acknowledging say at the dinner table asking each other you know how was your day like what do you want to be acknowledged for and beginning to incorporate the elements of love right mm. to bring to life how important the listening is you know and you know almost putting the duct tape over your mouth and just really listening to someone when they're upset and just really get what they're dealing with it's um it's miraculous Wow. Really, you know, it really is. I mean, I, can, I, can I just segue and share a recent breakthrough that I had this weekend? Yes, definitely. So, because it's, it's, it's really all related. And, you know, one of the other things is I, I do a, a Course in Miracles. I've been doing that for like the last 14 years. And I think, although I don't bring it to light while I'm talking usually or coaching it, I know that it's holding the space to create that transformation, to make the, the shift happen. And I have seen it over the last 25 years of my life where it can happen instantly. Mm. You know, when that breakthrough happens, when the experience of love comes in, when the connection happens is really it. When that connection is experienced, the relationship never goes back to the way it was, right? So, so, here, so here's what just happened to me. I, um, my my partner has been dealing with some health issues and he uh so for the last couple of months he's been really struggling and i've been reaching out to the, his kids and his families to get them involved to create teamwork around it and there's been a lot of resistance so so after his surgery this week it was finally like a blowdown now i generally find 
it's pretty normal for a big reaction to happen. And that's when all of the upsets, everything everybody's been holding comes out. That the breakthroughs tend to happen right after a big upset, right? So I really teach people there's nothing wrong with an upset. It's part of being human, but to look for the breakthroughs after them, right? Because then we just suppress things. So, so once that happened, I just called together a family meeting. I says, guys, let's, I'm not committed to operating this way. Let's, can we have a talk and, and just work this out? And the five of us got together and really all I did was listen. And we, everybody like vented and everybody spewed it all out and it all came out. And within an hour and a half, the shift happened and affinity was present and everybody got that we're all in the same place and we are the same team and everyone understood where each other was coming from. And I went away and I came back on, I came back yesterday and the whole house was miraculous and teamwork is alive and present. Like all the pain just goes away. Like truly when we move in love, everything is easy. Yes, I, I agree with that. You know, love, <laughs> Love is an absence of, a lot of times we communicate, we, we've got our response ready. We're just waiting for the other person to take a breath. So just <laughs> right. say what we need yeah. to say in our head, instead of truly being present and listening to what they have to say. Right. Uh, and especially if there's con you know, conflict, right. we, we're just, we're, we've got our defenses up, we've got our responses, we're, we're ready. We are armed and ready. And there is no love present there. Um, love is being vulnerable. It's being able that's to the secret. That's the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really is. So, and it's not an easy thing. With I mean, a lot of our viewers, they're dealing with so much. They've been so hurt. So hurt from the people that they at one time trusted everything with, you know, an ex-spouse and their children a lot of us can't imagine our right. children betraying us and yet they have and um and to wow go from that shell shockedness to being able to sit and just be with somebody just you know complaining and 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 just and kind of right spitting it all up at you mm -hmm. and then just sit there and okay i'm i'm going to be with that and, right. and be okay and not make them wrong for the things that they, they're saying and not defend that. Right. Yeah, that's where, that's where the healing happens in that space. Mm -hmm. what, one of the things that, I mean, I wish, I wish for everyone in the world to, to know, understand, or believe is that it really only takes an instant to shift a whole relationship where the past just disappears. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it really is possible. And and the irony, like for me, like where I look, it's so clear that everyone is striving. They're like running around, they're buying things, they're trying to earn more and more money. They're not feeling appreciated. And like this, they're looking at the symptoms of the problem. But once that connection happens and you begin to start to experience the connection, that love, the fear and anxiety goes away. And the moment you begin to get hooked on realizing that and you put your commitment on being, on really causing breakthroughs in the, every relationship around you, you take that on as like, a, as like a life endeavor, your life begins working and it just becomes an easier and easier habit the fear and anxiety in life just keeps going becoming less and less the worries about money becomes less and less because everything you do is easy and people like being around you you, know, you don't have to prove yourself and worry and you know all the other nonsense that goes with it yeah i get it oh wow that's freedom that is true truly being free right. so so tell me your okay so your clients who how do they come to be involved with you and, and work with you on these, on this program. Um, how do you, how do you get the referrals? So, so 
my website, it's uh, endingchaos.com, right? And I'm currently, because I'm just starting out really, um, launching a pilot program. So if anyone is out there and they want to jump in and be part of my test pilot, um, which is five sessions, it's no charge for this next three weeks. So I would be honored to work with anyone. Um, my credentials are out there and I'm here for any questions you may have or any concerns. Awesome. 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 All right. I and anything else that you'd like to say to our viewers? Um, yeah, I mean, one of the, I, the thing that I'm really clear about is the dynamics that we have in our family that we grew up in. Everyone is interlocked with each other. Like everyone plays a role, everyone plays a part of that dance. And maybe from a society standard, one role might look better or worse than the other, but they're really a role. And we take that role with us, our communication habits, our defense mechanisms over and over until we see it and cause a breakthrough. Mm. So the heartbreaking part is so many people that go through a divorce without having that breakthrough and they're just going to step into another relationship. You know, it, in the beginning, the, the pain might start out, you know, we intuitively know each other's sweet spots and pain spots. In the beginning, it's all the sweet spots. And then somebody breaks someone's love rule and you begin going in the other direction. You start pushing on those buttons from the past and our defense mechanisms begin to grow again until we really get clear about how to operate in love and connect. Yes, definitely. It is true, you know, if you, and if you're not careful, you will keep attracting the same person, same person. over and over again, just <laughs> different face, different name, right. and you're convinced, we're so convinced that that person is so not the one before it. No, really, they're the idiot. They're the um, but I really, I, yeah. When I got that I'm the common denominator and there was nowhere to run, Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I've had, uh, because my, my kids and I, we went through a lot of, um, just a, 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 it was, it was a difficult time. Um, and I know that my children, just like, I mean, we're all human. So we all have a certain aspect of healing that needs to be done. Even when we come to the, from the most perfect families. Right. But what I'm really clear about is I have a son that, is, is not complete with me. And my concern is it will show up in his relationships, you know, with, with females. Right. Leaving them yeah. on, stuff like that. So, so I am so committed that we have completion around that because I, I'm a stand for him. And I get that. But it, it's so easy to point the fingers. I know, right? It's so unreasonable. Well, they would just do this and they would do that and they would stop doing that. Then, um, but a lot of it is like really like owning uh, where they, and, and I'm with my kids and they, when they have certain, you know, character traits and stuff like that, that are, um, I'll say, yeah, they got that from me. <laughs> I really try to own it. Not just, you know, not just the good stuff. I try to own the, the not so good or the stuff that I'm like, yeah. Yeah, they um they got that from me, and right. it really makes it brings the it it brings the humanity in to the relationship and stuff like that, and especially when there's co conflict with the with exes and stuff like that. The children sometimes, at least my view of it is we can is they know mom doesn't take herself seriously, and it's okay to it's even okay to be mad at me and to and to make me wrong. Right. With that. You know, one of the things, Danica, is um, there, like, and I'm not sure everyone's aware that there actually is a place where a connection emerges. Mm. And when that connection is there, all of those little annoying things, all that stuff, the drama, it literally disappears. Mm. So, I mean, I'll, I'll just give you a small example that everyone can probably write to. Like, I'll notice, like, with my partner, if, um, 
like every now and then, right? Like he'll start like nitpicking and nagging over like, you know, the shoes by the door, this to that, the pots in the sink, whatever, right? And and he'll just go on a rant. Now the old me, before I understood about having a connection, I would have like run around in fear, basically, right? Trying to like, oh my God, let me get that done. Let me get that done. Let me, you just want to get the nagging, get him to get off your back where the experience might be like, I can never please him, whatever that, you know, he's never happy. But now that I understand, it's the connection that's missing. When I'm in that situation, I, I do not run around like that. I go and I focus on the connection. And I go and I find out what's bothering him. What's wrong? So I get the love reinstated, the connection moving again. And once that connection is there, I don't have to do it anymore. He really doesn't care, but that's not the point. When I do do it at that point, I'm really doing it out of love, being inspired and a place of respect instead of fear. Yeah. Which makes it easier to do, you know, or fun. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like fear is survival. I mean, fear is, there's just so many of those things that you don't want to, like you like you said, you're getting that you are going from the wrong side. Like there is no, there's no freedom in survival. Yeah, that's for sure. It's really, it's really nasty. <laughs> like, oh. Stop it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So why don't you go, go ahead and give us a, your website again. Sure. Um, and then it's uh, www dot ending chaos dot com that's e n d i n g c h a o s dot com all right ending chaos dot com i love that i love that thank all right you. thank you beverly so much for joining us on this week's custody matters live and i hope that you i hope to to follow your progress and see how things are going for awesome. you and um and i hope that our viewers have got some value out of this. And again, she's offering like three weeks, reach out to her in the, um, in the next three weeks so that she can help you and bring you into this program and, and give you some coaching for free. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everybody. We'll see you again next week.